All right, welcome back. Brand new, great music alert right here. Uh, we want to hip you to a great new band. Man, their album just came out. Uh, they are Gunshine from the state of Florida. And uh, it is a four-piece band. We got three of the four right here uh, in, in your face. And if you love that ACDC, Guns and Roses, Motley Crue, you know, in your face uh, type classic rock, man. They are, they're doing it big. Uh, welcome, Austin Ingerman. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, man. Appreciate you having us. Thanks so much. Oh, yeah. Always. Uh, great to follow your career. And I know this uh, is in your heart. You've been putting this band together for a while. And uh, please introduce us to your other two members there and, and tell us how uh, Jordan, your singer, came to play and uh, complete the, the foursome. Yeah, this is uh, so we got our drummer, James, here and our bass player, Pat, who, like I said, is he plays everything. So He's also awesome guitar player, piano player, singer, all the above. But uh, no, with Gunshine, we uh, it's something we were trying to get off the ground a long time ago, and um, we just we we set the bar very high for for singers and really what we were trying to do, and it just took years to get it right, and we we absolutely would not take anything less than than what we were trying to do, what we were looking for. So. Um, we James and I had been jamming for about six years now, and we were trying out different singers all over the country. And um, come to find out, Jordan, it was actually from our hometown uh, in in Florida. So uh, we we got him over, and it was one of those things where it was just it was like you know it just clicked instantly. The first writing session, we knew that once he laid the vocals down, he had that X factor voice that we were looking for, and he had the work ethic and everything else and then he introduced us to pat and it, it finally all kind of fell together right in the midst of all the COVID stuff happening so it was a little bit of silver lining there and and it was one of those weird things where the timing just kind of fell into place well yeah introduce your uh, your drummer back there and tell us again uh pat and and you know how, how you guys uh laid all these songs down yeah so um so like I alluded to, you know, James and I had been jamming for about six or seven years now, and we we started building some of the demos instrumentally because our thought process was, well, you know, we're going to do everything we can, at least musically, so that when we find the right singer, we'll at least have a lot of material to work with. So we actually started going to the studio to actually do like final drum and guitar tracks even before we had a singer. So like the song Wall Said to Call, Daylight, uh, I think Meet You There, a few, a few of the other songs in the album were completely tracked instrumentally before playing with, fires, yeah. playing with fire before we even had a singer. You know what I mean? It, and so that way, when we had, we wrote this album very, very fast because of that, I think. And so when we had found Jordan, we were really just focusing on writing vocals, you know, because all the, uh, a lot of the, um, the, the songs instrumentally were already done. And then, um, when, about that time when we were putting all those demos together uh jordan introduced introduced us to pat and then we all kind of it completed everything and then um on top of everybody being a killer musicians everybody had you know had the look and had the the work ethic and all the other thousand things that you're that you're looking for you know when you're trying to put a band together so it uh it just worked out i know i mean i'm celebrating 50 years in the business so i've seen every scenario but it's it's kind of scary when you're in that moment and you're thinking, okay, he's got a good voice or this guy can play. You, you're just hoping that that bad, that bad omen doesn't show up like, oh man, he's got bad habits. Oh shit. He's got a funky attitude. Oh man. He's, uh, he's got some controlling chick that's going to be, you know, a headache. I mean, not that you can't have a love or you can't have a family and all that, but you know, the band's got to come first to to really get it off the ground and, to make it count and, and all that. And obviously, you know, going on the road is a sacrifice to, to some and all, all those different levels. Like, like I've always said, um, you know, the talent is the main thing, but a very quick second is the attitude. Can you hang with this person like 24 hours a day, if you're in a van or if you're, you know, doing small gigs and you, you going from, from, you know, the the truck stop to the sound check to the the, the motel or, or you're camping out i mean sleeping in the van whatever it takes can you really hang with this person and you never know till you really get into it you know what their 
um, like you say, their work ethic, their perseverance, their uh, bad habits, or their, um, y- you know, threshold to pain. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, now with New Year's Day, did you actually ever do the warp tour? I never did warp tour with them. I came in just after they had done that. So I believe it was like 2018. My first tour with them was with Hailstorm. And in this moment, it was like an arena um, tour, you know, and that was uh, summer of summer of 2018, I believe it was. Yeah, and that was a great tour. I mean, they stepped up. But as you know, prior to that, they did the warp tour for years and talking about a trial by fire. Oh, my God. You know, if there's any more of a brutal tour than the warp tour and and really made so many stars, um, tell me about it, because it's in it's in broad daylights in the middle of summer. Yes, we, they, they went down south. They were right there in Florida and all across Texas and Alabama and all that. They went all across the nation, like, you know, um, 80 bands on eight stages for like 12 hours a day. And um, there was a saying that, um, well, there was a bunch of sayings, but um, everybody was equal on that. There was no room for rock stars was the saying. There's a documentary called that. And there's a few documentaries on the Warp Tour. But the attitude was like, if you think you're above anybody else on this tour, whether you're in catering or walking through the crowd or trying to get people in front of your stage or, you know, loading out in 115, 20 degree weather, whatever it is, you better go home, man, because th- this is this this is the real deal. And I can't tell you the, the list. There's an alphabetical list online if you want to Google it. Warp tour artists that, that have played over the years, it'll blow your mind how many hit bands and stars got their start, you know, in, in the most brutal of summer tours. And, you know, we ran it for 25 years. And I know Kevin Lyman, the owner, the founder, he, he must be so glad he wound it down like the year before COVID wound up because it, it would have been insane trying to navigate or maintain that tour nobody wanted to see it go but it he when i'm telling you 80 bands on 80 stages and you know star bands and names you've never seen so many tour buses and bands and box trucks in your life and you know backstage at, at the warp tour and tickets were like 35 bucks I remember that day. right and, and once the promoter and the costs and they're like oh you're gonna have to make these tickets at least 60 or 80 bucks he just said we're done the whole concept of this thing was for young people. I don't care if you're 10, 12, 14, 16, 20, whatever. Um, Going to the Warp Tour in the summer had to be affordable. It had to be, like I say, everybody was treated equal. Anytime you saw the billing of those 80 bands, they were all alphabetical. Even if you were the headliner on one of the biggest stages there, you weren't in bigger print or, you know, a bigger font. It was literally alphabetical. So it was... um, it was something to behold and people learned so many lessons on that. But I, I, I know Nikki and uh, you know, some of your cohorts there from New Year's, they, they definitely can tell you about the warp tour. I mean, it was. Um, oh, yeah. And they have, they've told me a lot of stories for sure. <laughs> you know. Insane. Well, tell us about the the recording of this. Cause I know Chris Collier um, recorded uh, the vocals in Vegas with Jordan and you laid down the guitar and drums in Decatur, Alabama with your guy. Uh, tell us about that process and, and why it really worked for you. Yeah, well, on this album, we were really trying to go completely old school. You know, in this band, we're very passionate about um, the raw, you know, energy of, of rock and roll. I'm playing in a room together and there's certain parts like a, a song called Something Real. It's like the ninth track on the album. You know, we're, we're playing that live together. There's no way that you can program a part like that or 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 even even do it separately it's one of those things where we're looking at each other and hitting those hits together you know and so we wanted to have a studio that we could play live on the floor completely analog go you know have the marshals crank them up and the way it's supposed to be and that's that's how we feel at least and um that so that studio in decatur is amazing it's run by jeremy stevens and he's got you know tons of vintage gear great drum room the drums always sound amazing there so we actually have done a lot of drum tracks there before and it's also fun for guitar because again we can crank the amps and it's kind of a just it's just a low pressure um environment and so we feel comfortable there and on top of that it's not a very far drive 
from where we live. So it kind of made sense. Um, when we were doing this record, it was on the tail end of, well, I mean, COVID still isn't over with. So, I mean, but it was kind of still in the midst of, uh, of that stuff. But, uh, it just made the most sense to do it there for this one, the drums and guitars at least, but we wanted to do the vocal tracking with, uh, we wanted Jordan to meet Chris and, um, you know, we wanted to, um, fly out there and do the vocals with him in Vegas and just kind of reconnect with him. And so that was the best way we did it um, for this, for this album. It just made the most sense. Yeah. Well, well, you guys, um, you know, James, tell us about the, the, the best of the process for you, you know, working now with uh, Jordan and, and of course, Pat and, you know, working with Chris and the, and the process there in Decatur. Um, what, what were the highlights for you? Well, I mean, I've heard this quote many times. It takes a village to raise a band. And I feel like I just have an all-star team now. I've got yeah. all-star players as well as Chris Collier. We call him the wizard. He's this like awesome producer who's working with, you know, White Snake and Mick Mars now. He's, he's getting bigger and bigger every year. And Jeremy Stevens is awesome in Decatur. So I just feel like I'm surrounded by all these, um, these rock stars and these these total badasses and it just makes me want to step up my game every time I go record a drum track or write or whatever and that's a really great feeling to feel like you're part of something that's going to get better and better it's not going to be like a, a dead-end road like you know sometimes you start bands and you put all this time and energy and money into it and it just goes nowhere but with this it's so worth it every little every 4 a.m flight we have to Vegas every you know truck stop we got to stop at you know for on tour with a band or something it's just all worth it mm -hmm. yeah how about you pat same thing yeah kind of piggyback off of what james was saying same deal i mean like it's inspiring like I'm, I'm a fan of every single one of these guys you know i've been friends with jordan probably the longest we met each other at a gig like we were doing a dual piano gig together and i like, like the first time i heard this guy saying i was like man i want to be in a band with this guy and then fast forward six seven years later and we are now and it's it just it's motivating Every decision I make every day, depending on like where I spend money and even like where I live, you know, I, I signed a lease in a place that's like in halfway between work and halfway between practice so that I can make both, you know, make both happen. And uh, it feels like James said, it, it feels worth it to make these kind of sacrifices and whatnot and to spend money on the gear that we need and the time and energy and on what we need um, to get this stuff done because it, it does feel worth it. You know, I know it's not a lost cause. I really yeah. It. Well, if anybody's ever played sports or you love sports, you, you understand the analogies, man. Everybody on the team, from the coaches to the trainers to the, you, you know, the quarterback to the defensive line, everybody's got to excel at what they do to mm -hmm. have a shot. You know what I mean? And you inspire each other. Like you say, uh, if, if somebody's really excelling, it's going to make you want to like, man, why stop here? Let me let me push the limit a little a little harder. Let me see if I can, you know, learn some new tricks or, you know, expand my musical vocabulary or. You know, I, I know being a young band on the road, it's important that everybody else have other skills too. Somebody's good with the the merch. Somebody's good with the setup of the gear. Somebody's good with the the sound, or somebody's good with the damn van in case something happens. You gotta, <laughs> you know, get under the van. You know, uh, yeah. get AAA over there. Whatever it is, um, you know, somebody's good with social media. They're blasting out while you're driving. Um, we learned that on the Warp Tour too. It's like you got a lot of downtime, man. Besides that half hour. 45 minutes on stage, you better, you better bring something else to the table. If you know, if we're, you're waiting 23 hours and 30 minutes to just do that, then you, you're almost like uh, extra, extra weight, you know, on the bus or van, we mm -hmm. might find somebody does what you do and this other stuff. So um, I, I always think that's good too. excel at, at mm -hmm. other things. And, and then even as a band, as you grow, if you can, bring in those other levels okay we got this social media person we got this person we got this person that does just nothing but sound and setup and guitar tech and this person is you know really good you know with the vehicles and driving and you know navigation and all that then you 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 appreciate even more you may not be doing that task anymore but you're looking at that person on the team is doing it and you're like yeah right on you're you're as important as we are everybody in the crew everybody on the team everybody moving forward is really equally important, you know, in that sense that um, if there's a loose, you know, not, you know, in the chain, uh, it can break, it can break a lot easier. So 
everybody's got to excel what they do to really shine. Definitely. I 100% agree with, mm -hmm. with everything you said. And that's, that's just it. And especially in 2022, you have to kind of, you have to wear, you know, many hats, as they say, I guess, and, and do, you got to be kind of a video editor and a, and a, like you said, if, if you're not that, then you got to be this. And you, you know, there's a lot of things, the more you can do in house, the better. And um, you save money too. And it's, uh, it's definitely crucial. Yeah. You, you, you're in on the graphics, you're in on the, the right. mailing list. That was a big thing on the warp tour, you know, pre, you know, pre so much of the social media is people would go around with pads and get people's, you know, text numbers or email addresses and build up your database, you know, to blast mm -hmm. people, you know, messages. But um, yeah, it, 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 it's fun to think that way. So there's less loose, loose time and, um, you know, more, like I say, um, just people being great at what they do. And, and now all of a sudden, you know, four people can be kicking ass to the degree of eight or 10 people, you know, because everybody, you know, uh, one plus one equals four or five, you know, when you got the right people on the team. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. So now we got gun shine. Is it a self-titled album? It is, you know, we, we wanted to make a statement with this one and we just wanted to call it just uh, the first one, just gunshine. Like, this is it. We here. <laughs> We're doing it. And uh, yeah, so completely self-titled, ten song debut album. Yeah. Well, Walt said to call the first video I saw. I'm like, all right, I'm hooked, man. Set up an interview. Let's go. <laughs> so shit. You know, I know Jordan came in with those lyrics. You and James already had the the track pretty much ready to go. Uh, Pat added his touch. Now all of a sudden. You got this, this concept that can be taken on a number of different levels. Cause like I say, growing up as a delinquent in school, you know, you're, you're reading the crazy stuff on written on the walls in the, in the school bathroom and, you know, for a good time call and you're like, ah, this couldn't be real, but it's that fantasy of like, well, what if it is, you know, or, you know, what, what if, you know, and uh, tell us about how that concept gelled with you, you guys. And, and how you're you're so proud of this song single and video yeah i mean with, with this song you know this was kind of our introductory in, yeah introduction to jordan and so he this was the first song that we kind of worked on together and when he came in he was kind of asking me like you know what are you going for what vibe are you going for and i was like you know we're really just trying to have something fun upbeat you know for, like nothing we're not trying to do like the dark, depressing, like this is an album where you just can blast in the bar with, with people and it sounds good or whatever. So um, that was kind of what he came up with. And, and um, it was really just, I thought it was cool. Cause it was, it was a, presented in a way, like you hear the songs about the bathroom wall or whatever, but the wall said to call if I need anything was a, a little bit different way to say it. And I just thought that was a really catchy tagline. Um, cause you know, people, that's kind of a phrase that people say like, call me if you need anything or whatever, when you're leaving or whatever. And so the wall said to call, if I need anything, I just thought that was, that was really clever. And, um, and it, it, it also just captured the vibe and the essence of what this album and what the song, um, the vibe that it, that it gives you is just the energetic, um, fun party rock and roll. Yeah. And you captured that in the video, you know, people are in, in, in the club might be drinking and maybe had a smoke on their way in. They're just, you know, jamming with their friends. There's some pretty girls or, you know, different people are looking at uh, who's in the crowd and, and you're just feeding off that energy of the band. And of course um, you guys nailed it. Why did you choose that club and who helped you put that video together? Yeah, that, that was our, uh, our, our buddy, Jimmy Sims was the video director with that, but we, uh, we chose it, it was actually a, an Irish pub called it Patio O'Leary's in our in our hometown of Pensacola. And it was it was just it it perfectly uh, captured the vibe of the song. It's it's kind of got that, you know, that real dark and dingy kind of vibe, but in a good way. You know, it's it's uh, gritty. it's yeah, it's gritty. And he, there's there's all these, uh, you know, cool like lights and atmosphere and and stuff like that. So it just it just really it felt like the right place to do it. and. Um, especially with a song like Wall said to call it, it is referencing like, you know, uh, being in a bar. And so I really felt like in the video, we, we kind of captured at least the vibe and what we were trying to do. 
it was really fun at the end of the song everybody's jumping around and going crazy and and uh yeah that was a super fun video to make yeah it's infectious you can feel it you know and uh, i'm checking out the daylight video and more and more of what you got i know you guys are constantly coming up with ideas and you know we encourage everyone to go check them out the website is gunshineband.com and you'll check them out across social media uh, of course uh, you can check out the video links below and uh yeah if you love that classic rock and roll man it's got the grittiness and and that that feeling you know classic acdc guns and roses motley crew all those bands i worked with in the early days and that's what kept me in the business so long is it's that magic you never know you know when you're going to find it when you catch it you know we call it capturing lightning in a bottle you know it's the mm -hmm. right the right members the right song the right attitude and you know who who knows people could be listening to it 10 20 50 years from now you know like so many of these other classics that we're talking about and um you know coming up and working with the late great Bon Scott, you know, with ACDC and just seeing how real he was on that highway to hell tour. And, you know, we lost him way too early, but the band kept going and they even got bigger, you know, with back in black and everything, but just, just seeing that raw fun, you know, um, it definitely brought back some memories when I, when I saw your video. So I want to encourage everybody to go check out the band gunshine. Uh, thanks Austin. Thanks James. Thanks Pat. Look forward to uh, meeting Jordan and seeing you guys on the road. And uh, yeah, our next conversation, man. Thanks so much for joining us. And uh, let's spread the word, man. Rock and roll. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we had a blast. Appreciate you.